Welcome to the other Mike and Mike show where shoulder dipping is mandatory. The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. Dip. Listen to me, Mike. Your self-esteem is low right now. The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. The shoulder dips. You know how stupid that sounds? The shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips, the shoulder dips. Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? You ain't paying, we ain't playing, baby. And welcome to episode three of the other Mike and Mike show. I am Mike Whittles. And I am Mike Thorvert. What's happening, Mike? Not too much. I am, uh... In near depression mode due to fantasy football, I'm having a terrible year. Was your, fan, your your team is injured all over the place? All over the place. I'm zero and two, man, and uh, I'm zero and two and one. I'm one and one in the other. And Thursday night, Roddy White doesn't play. I lose another guy, Jamal Charles. It's you know, it's one after another, and I don't know. In the beginning of the season, I thought I had a solid team. I thought I had a top three team. Now I'll be lucky to get in the playoffs. I think at you know at this point. Not to rub salt in your wounds, I'm two and zero in my my main fantasy league, and my my running backs are studs. I got who, who do I have I have in there? I have first of all, I picked up what's his name, Levy and Bell as my flex. He's a beast. Flex. I got Marshawn Lynch, and I have uh, Demarcus Murray. I don't think you can get any better those three running backs the first two weeks. No, you can't whatsoever. Uh, those are three. I mean, those are. I mean, the, those. I mean, the, the, those are three beast running backs. I'm lucky to have one good running back. Um, you know, I have Matt. You know, it, it, I had Jamal Charles, and oh no, I lost Ryan Matthews too. You know Fail. what I mean? I had Jamal Charles and Ryan Matthews. They were my two running back starters, and I lost them both. Fail. Fail. Am I, who's your quarterback? Because I told you my quarterbacks are. Uh, we're a two quarterback league, and I got Peyton Manning, Cam Newton, and I got Dalton on my bench. Um, both of my leagues are two quarterback leagues. The one I have Matt Ryan and uh, Colin Kaepernick, and I have Ryan Tannehill on my bench. But I think I'm benching Kaepernick this week to play Tannehill. Uh, the Chiefs have give up the six most fantasy points to wide receivers and quarterbacks, so I think I'm going to go ahead and bench Kaepernick because I just don't think he's that good. And uh, in the other league, I have Matt Stafford and Cam Newton, and uh, I don't even remember who's on my on my bench. To be to be perfectly honest with you, um, in week one, Cam Newton didn't play, right? Of course. So I go off of history, and I saw Sean Hill out there, and he was better than my bench option that I currently have, be, you, know, be, you know, because of matchups. Sean Hill? You're better off taking somebody from the cast of One Tree Hill. Than play well, Hill. no, he's, he's, he's a good fantasy quarterback. He's like Chad Henney. The Jacksonville Jaguars are never going to win, but Chad Henney's going to throw 350 yards every week because they're always losing. That's kind of how Sean Hill is and the Rams. They suck, so they're always throwing the ball. He's, he's a good fantasy option. But he got up to about seven points, and then he got hurt. So I had Cam Newton out. I got seven points out of my QB. And in our two QB league, you want to get at least 40, 50 points out of your quarterback to have a shot. Understood. So, it's just, just, so you know, it's just been terrible. I, you know, it, come week five or six, I'm not even going to care anymore. I'm just going to trade away oh, that's everybody. terrible. I hate when it gets like that. When, you get to, when your team is just irrelevant and then your Giants suck. It's, it's a terrible season. I'm going to – I got to find something else to, to a do. Yeah, thank God hockey season's starting. You know, I'm a huge hockey fan. Hockey trumps all for me, and uh, I, can't, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for hockey. I don't watch hockey. I, I, so you're, I, you're, you're a mess. I can't watch hockey. It's the I greatest mean, it's, sport. It's the greatest sport. I've tried. I even have a hockey team right here. I, I have the baby penguins right not, here in my town. Team. Watch the NHL. And I've never watched it. I mean, I mean, I've watched it, but I just can't continue. I guarantee you, I take you to a game at Madison Garden, you're a hockey fan. Okay. That's what I hear. I've never seen one live. I heard that if you go and see one live, it's kind of different, and that you'll get kind of sucked in. Uh, you, you do. You get totally sucked in, and then you can't help but watch. And I'm addicted, and I've been addicted since my God, since I was a kid. And it's one. I, I know it's a niche sport. People say it's a niche sport. It's the best sport out there. Fastest sport. You got fights. You got guys changing on the fly. All the, all the substitutions are on the fly. Just nonstop action. You got just guys banging guys. It's it's just. Rough, physical, and skill at the same time. I, I love it, man. I, I eat it up. Now, because of now because of your location, are you a Devils fan or are you a Rangers fan? I fucking hate the Devils. Okay, I don't know how it works. I had season tickets to the Rangers uh, from 1997 until 2012, and when the second lockout came, 
there was there was a bunch of uh, labor disputes. I know for the folks out there that are hockey fans, they get it. But they had one where we lost a whole season. Now it's like nine years ago, and they didn't play. And the reason why they broke the cap, they had a cap. They said this will never happen again, and uh, then they had a lockout again, which is to me it's like why would you have miss a season and then all of a sudden now we're not playing again, right? And as a fan, I just got so disgusted, and I just like fuck it, I'll just get freebies. So I get free tickets from friends that can't go, and I know a lot of folks that have tickets and business and stuff. So you know, so, it is. so you uh, uh, gave up your season tickets. I did. Is what you're saying you sold them? Is what- no, I just didn't renew them. Oh, okay. okay. All right. See, I don't know how that works. I know that some places, like say like in Boston, if somebody has season tickets to the Boston Red Sox um, and they don't want them anymore, normally they won't sign them over to somebody else and sell them. What, like, what they'll do is they'll give them back to uh, the Red Sox and, you know, and then allow somebody to you know, on, you know, on the waiting list to get them. Yeah, this is the same thing here. I just, I just don't renew. So they're just like, okay, we got two, person. two new seats. They, they give zero fucks if you don't renew. Right. Well, yeah, because somebody's going to get them. It's all suits there anyway. Really? You know, the, the all, who can afford those seats down low? I mean, all the seats down low or the luxury boxes, They since they redid Master Garden, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's gorgeous. But, you know, it's on, on a Monday night, I'm going to watch uh, the Winnipeg Jets come to town and paying $12 a Heineken. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess. That is a mess. I just go home watching on MSG Network, and when they're... You know, they blow, they blow a two-goal lead. I can just turn the TV off, shoulder dip right up to my room. And I drank myself a half a, a, half a six-pack. It cost me four bucks. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, no, it's true. Beer is so expensive at any sort of event. It's ridiculous. Not as bad as I saw. I, I don't know if we might have talked about this, you and I, either on the first two episodes or not. But I, when I saw Motley Crue and Alice Cooper uh, two weeks ago, dude, they wanted 13 fucking dollars for a Miller Lite. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't uh, uh, talk about the prices. That's insanity. Like thirteen dollars for it's probably a twelve ounce plastic cup of beer, right? Or probably oh, no, one of those uh, aluminum bottle, bottle yeah, can exactly. type deals. It was an aluminum bottle, right? Thir- thirteen bucks. That 13. that that's insane. A case is twenty. It's insanity. And that was for and there was, I can't remember if there was a there was one beer that was more. I, I'd have to go. I'd have to go and look. But I was just like, well, what the hell? Anything that was like uh, imported that was fancy schmancy. They wanted more money for it. So I had to give plasma, sperm, and like a, like a Twansky to get something imported. I don't get it's, that at all. No, and I don't get the prices. Look, I understand your rent of your arena or whatever is huge. I, I, you know, the, uh, a bill is huge for renting the arena. I un- understand you got to pay staff. You got to pay taxes. You got to pay uh, security and unions. A lot of arenas, they only hire unions, so it's really expensive. Um, but thirteen dollars a beer. Yeah, I mean, come that, on. I mean that should be fucking illegal. I mean that's yeah, it should be some sort of crime. I mean, you think about and now that we're now that we just put the NFL in our rearview mirror. Uh, before before we move on, by the way, Giants win or lose this week? Who are we playing? I, uh, two and oh, two and oh, Houston <laughs> Texans. Oh, uh, well, the Texans' defense is kind of a little shady at this point because they lost, J- you know, uh, Jade of Clowney, their number one pick for like six yeah, weeks. Yeah, they got J.J. Watt, who's the best oh, uh, defense player in the league. Who's catching touchdowns now. It's insanity. Um, he's, you know, he's catching touchdowns as a tight end now. He, right. He's, he's the $120 million player. Good, good, good player, man. He's fantastic. He's amazing. He's worth every dollar. He's, uh, he's also a pretty stand-up guy. Um, you know, they did an interview with him about, you know, what he's going to do now that he's rich. He's like, nothing. He's like, I'm going to buy a truck and that's about it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? He's just, he's a, just a very humble man, unless he's just playing it for the cameras or whatever. But to get back to what you were saying, the giants, um, I don't see how they can win. You know, it, 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 I, I, I hate to say it cause I'm such a diehard giants fan and it kills me. It almost gives me a heart attack when I watch them play, and it makes me sick to my stomach when I watch them play like garbage. Ugh. I just don't see them beating Houston. Their defense is fucking horrendous. Uh, I think J.J. Watt might have 14 sacks <laughs> this week. It's possible. I mean, Because our offensive line is, you know, it's like me blocking for him. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you and I are on the left side of the line. It, it's horrendous. And let me tell you what, after watching last week, 
you know, we've talked about this before. Eli makes some bad decisions, but let me tell you what, man, there's a lot of drops. We drop a lot of passes that we should not drop, especially Victor Cruz. He bitches and moans about getting more looks and more pass. Well, he does, and he drops half of them. Yeah, it, he drops a lot. He, he, to me, he lost that game. He dropped that third down. There was a pass. They hit him right in the hands. He drops it, and then they punt, and then fucking Ted Ginn runs right back. Right, right. And you know, and they're you know, and then they give Eli a hard time about. It. I mean, don't get me wrong, he can improve as well. But when he gets rushed as often as he does, when he has wide receivers that can't catch a ball, um, and when your offensive line is as bad as it is, you can't really get your run game going because they get stuffed immediately because your line gets pushed back. It's tough. They have a lot of problems, and I think they're going to have a lot of problems for the next few years. Um, yeah, until they have uh, an offensive line and. And people that can catch the ball. I mean, I think when – if they're wide open, they can catch. But great receivers can catch the ball in traffic or they catch the ball if it comes anywhere near their hands, no matter how awkward the ball's coming at them. Anyway. The guys like Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's not dropping that pass, the one that, that Cruz dropped in the third quarter. Fitzgerald catches everything. I, I feel bad for a guy like Fitzgerald who gets stuck on the Cardinals that gets six catches a game or five catches a game. That, that guy should be getting ten – that guy should be getting 120 catches a year. That guy was two minutes from a Super Bowl ring. He's a he's a stud, you and I still that. think he's a top five wide receiver. He's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL still to this day. I feel bad when he scored that touchdown in the Super Bowl, and then Pittsburgh came back and beat them. Yeah, because that was a great break. He yeah. ran he's fast. Nobody caught him. He's huge. Like you're not taking down Larry Fitzgerald in full stride. Nope. The guy, the guy's a monster, and. Um, yeah, I mean, a guy like Larry Fitzgerald, you know, catches that pass. You know, you can't call yourself an elite wide receiver and drop a pass like that. That's exactly right. And their play calling is terrible. I really hope that they get rid of that offensive coordinator. They just Things got him. What's his name? Wackadoo? Yeah, he sucks. I can't even think of his name. But Wackadoo I, or McAdoo. Not, yeah. Not Wackadoo. Right. Well, the, you know, this is the Giants play, and I want to punch the TV. Here's the Giants repetition. R- Rashad Jennings, Rush. One yard gain, second down. Rashad Jennings rush, two yard gain, third down. What do you think they're going to do? Every single time they're going to pass the ball. Every single time, they know what they're going to do. Their play call is garbage. But hasn't the play calling always been garbage? No, I mean, the, I mean, when the Giants got really hot the first year, when they went nine and seven, and they went, and they beat the undefeated Patriots. The play calling was great. Like you, you know. Eli Manning used to step right up, first down, first and 10, or second and eight, and he'd sling the ball 15, 20 yards. You know, they'd pass on first down. They'd pass on second down. Uh, They'd go for 15-yard slant plays and use Cruz as a slot receiver like they should be doing instead of bombing it 50 yards down the field. Like, Eli Manning throws more bombs than America does at Iraq. Not no more. Well, not no more. But, I mean, it's terrible. Like, just... I don't know. Overall, it's a bad team. They have a lot of improving to do. I'm not looking forward to the next few years, but I could be wrong. You know, they could start off own five, come back, win the Super Bowl at eight and eight. You know, yeah, I, you don't know. There's a lot of parity in the league. I think once they get Odell Beckham back and they get another target, that might help too. They've suffered some injuries. They just need to shore up. That, they need to shore up that offensive line. I'm still not sold on the running back situation, and they have no linebackers. Right. They have no linebackers. I miss, dude. I miss this. I miss the uh, Michael. You know, I miss the Michael Strand days. That team, that defense was beast. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Shit, I miss Carl Banks and Taylor and Gary Reasons. Uh, Harry Carson. It was. It was just such a stud squad. The def, The you know the defense was always good, and it got the ball back for them often. But now you have an offense that. It, Regardless of the offense, the defense can't stop them. They chew eight minutes off the clock every time they have the ball because the defense is garbage. They give up six first downs on every play, you know, on every series. Oh, it's, it's atrocious. There's no three and out. No, never. There's never three and outs with them. They're going to, you know, every team is guaranteed at least two series against the Giants. Every down, you know, every series they're guaranteed at least two. It's terrible. But we did win two rings in the in recent memory, so we shouldn't bitch that much. There's t- people that we know that are Eagle fans that don't know what that is. All they know is uh, they know like what's his name, Kenny King, catching an 80 yard screen pass from Plunkett in 1980. Yeah, losing. All they know are NFC championships, which I guess guess isn't something to be too 
disheartened about, but they definitely don't know what winning a Super Bowl is all about. No, they know when they go to the Super Bowl, the quarterback throws up and they lose. Yeah, they're going to lose. I mean, I mean, they're going to win our division most likely. They're, yeah, I mean, then, it's most likely the Eagles are probably going to win the NFC East. And then it gets slammed by some team that's battle ready, like uh, Seattle or something. In the oh yeah, I mean, I mean, they have no chance <laughs> of winning at all, or probably, you, you, you know, or probably. I would love for them to go like fourteen and two and then just lose. Right. That would even be a little more sweeter for me. That would that would be a. I think I would rather see them go undefeated, like the Patriots did, and lose, than the Giants win. Because I just fucking hate Philadelphia that much. So do I, but I don't think I'd rather see that. I I would love to see the Giants get their fifth ring in my lifetime. Yeah, I think we will. I think we will. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I guess so. I think on average, I probably have about another thirty-five years left on planet Earth. So. You know, hopefully more. But I'm going to give myself an average age of 70 due to all the past shoulder dipping that my life has yeah, incurred. I'm, I'm guessing I got like a plus or minus 15. <laughs> well, hopefully plus. Right. We don't want 15. No, we, no, 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 no. We don't we, want minus. We don't want only 15. But you, but you know what I mean. I mean, I, I, I can see within the next decade we build up again. We're one of those teams that once we build up, we win. We're not like a team that constantly is building up like Tampa Bay and loses 56 to 14 on Thursday Night Football. Right. Terrible, by the way. That was atrocious. If you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, go kill yourself. Well, I was so bummed out, too, because I had Matt Ryan as my quarterback, and they just ran the score up so quick that he could never get that 300-yard bonus that we get because they because they took him out. They benched him. They're winning 56 nothing or whatever it was at that point or 42 nothing. and they're like, well, we might as well bench him. And I was so bummed. And a guy like Roddy White would have had a huge game, but he got hurt, and they sat him. Julio Jones had 130 yards receiving by like the second quarter, you know. Terrible. Terrible. Which reminds me, everybody, as far as fantasy goes, if you're listening to this over the next couple weeks, pay attention to guys like Brian Quick and uh, Harry Douglas. Brian Quick plays for the St. Louis uh, Rams, and Harry Douglas is the number three receiver. I think he's the X receiver in in Atlanta. Um, Roddy White, he's very injury prone and he's hurt now. I believe it's an ankle and who knows how they heal. So if I were you, I'd go pick up a guy like Harry Douglas, because even when Roddy White and Julio Jones are both playing Roddy, you know, Harry Douglas is good for six catches for 50 yards, almost every single game. Um, sometimes a TD. And if you're in a PPR league, that's great. You know what I mean? 11 points, 11 points is good for a flex, especially on a bye week But if Roddy White goes out, Again, Harry Douglas is a monster. He's a monster n- uh, number two. I think at this point you can probably drop a guy like ha- you can probably drop a guy like Hakeem Nicks off of your team. I don't think he's going to do much this year. Um, I think he's going to have some big games, but I think your only hope to Hakeem Nicks of having a great season as far as fantasy goes is Reggie Wayne or T. Y. Hilton getting hurt. Yeah, that's a shame too because he was such a stud for so long. He still is a stud. He just. Uh, he did, he just has to be used properly. He's got to be put on a team that, you know, is going to use him as a solid one and two, solid one or two. You know what I mean? He'd be a great compliment to at number two for a stud receiver. Like he'd be a great compliment to a guy like Calvin Johnson. I don't know. He was he was a great number. Yeah, I guess I guess he was like a number two or a number one, two and number two with Cruz. But those guys were a great one two combination. Great combination. And then you had Manningham thrown in there every now and then that you know freaking that you had to worry about. Um, Hakeem Nix is easy. I mean, he was their number one until the undrafted crews like showed his head. Know what I mean? And just went off. Know what I mean? He, you know, he'd, you know, he'd have three catches for 140 yards <laughs> because you know you could like where's that Victor Cruz at? Know what I mean? They're at you know they're at their own ten. They dish it off to Cruz right. at yards, and he runs 80. Know what I mean? Like where's that Cruz at? Uh, you tell me. The guy, our, my Cruz can't catch the third down pass. No, I mean, he's going to start getting benched now in fantasy. That's, that, that's another disappointment. I have him in both leagues, and I'm going to bench him. I'm playing Steve Smith over him, who is having a resurgence here, and I love it. I love Steve Smith. I don't know about that. I, I, can't, I can't handle that. Anyway, so who is the tight end? Who's the tight end that's catching all the passes, though? Is that, is that Donnell? Yes. Uh, he's, like, tall, maybe, like, 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Let me look him up. Yeah, I got it. I got it right here. I just yeah, six five. Yeah, Larry Donnell. According to the Giants website, he's six 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 two 
six six two sixty five. Where do you I mean, go to, where do you go to school? Grambling. 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 That's the school that don't let whites in. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kidding. But it's just like in that one of the schools. It's like uh, he went to what Grambling State. That's like a that's like a black school, right? Um, I don't anything, know. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I mean, there are schools that do that. I mean, it's not that they ban whites. I mean, that's an interesting topic. I think we should talk about that a little bit. There's like some schools that uh, are are meant. Let me look up Grambling State real quick. I got yeah, I got it right here. It says uh, here we go. They're in Louisiana. They are a historically black four year institution founded as in quotes colored industrial and agricultural school. It's interesting because I know you see them play on weekends. Like Channel Four will have that game Grambling versus. Whatever, another black school, Sun City, you know, whatever the hell it is. It's like uh, Hampton, I think. Yeah, Hampton, founded as normal, Hampton Normal and Agricultural Institute versus the Colored Industrial and uh, Agricultural Institute. So, yeah, I mean, I always found it interesting, even in today's day and age, where there's schools that are primarily for black students, not that you can't get in if you're a different race. It's just that I just don't know why you'd why you'd want to, right? And it's well, anything is it? I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of schools that are promoted as all black colleges. Um, what makes me think? What, what, imagine if they had a school that promoted as an all white college. Well, I mean, that's just I mean, that's a crazy conversation. Um, and we actually talked about it offline in the past, like not like not too long ago. And I couldn't imagine the craziness. That would happen if me or anybody, you know, some some rich multi-billionaire, some billionaire mogul wanted to start his own college, his own accredited college and made it for predominantly whites and advertised it as such. I mean, can you imagine the wiki? I mean, the, the uh, Wikipedia of Grambling State University says Grambling State University is a historically black public co-educational u- university. Can you imagine if. Someone's wiki page for their college said, you know, ABC State University is a historically white public co-educational yeah, university. Like if, like if L.L. Bean wanted to start a university because no blacks buy L.L. Bean. Right. Let's be honest. So if you have, if you have L.L. Bean University, that's a predominantly white university that uh, shows whatever. Just uh, we, we, we cater to whites. I mean, they, that's, that place would be burned in the ground. It'd be burned to the ground. It'd be on every single news station, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week until it shut down. That's all you would see. And before anybody out there goes crazy and ballistic and calls us racists, we're not racists by any stretch of the imagination. We are simply looking at the fact that I just find it interesting. I find it super interesting that it's socially acceptable to advertise an all black college, but it's hateful. To advertise an all white college. Oh, I, I agree completely. Not that I'm, and I'm not offended by an all black college at all. Me either. I'm not. I'm not offended by it. It's fine. I have no problems. I sleep just fine knowing that there's colleges out there that market to black people. It's fine. Who I cares? don't care. I don't care if they had one that was just for Asians. I mean, hell, I had to move out of Bensonhurst because I was the only non Asian, and not because I didn't like the Asians. Just like uh, they kind of didn't like me. Right. It's time to move on. It's, it's time, time to go. For you to move. No. Right. And uh, according to infoplease.com, today there are currently 101 historically black colleges and universities in the United States. That's a lot. 101. There's 101 historically black colleges. There isn't one that I know of, not one college that. So, like Vermont State? Because that would probably be a. Vermont University's got to be all white. Right. I mean, but that's just due to locale. It's not advertised as a white college. It's just, you know, there are certain areas of the United States that are predominantly white. So therefore, the college is going to be predominantly white. But it's not advertised as, you know, Vermont State, white the white college. college. Right. The other, the other white meat. <laughs> right. And it's I just think it's a huge double standard. And it, and it doesn't make me mad. It just confuses me how one is called racist and one is called education or the right, you know, we yeah, have the right to have an all black college. Well, if you have the right to have an all black college, why don't I have the right to have an all white college? No, I agree completely. I just I don't know how the curriculum in an all black college would be compared to a college that's not. I mean, does it does it? And I'm and I'm being quite, just frankly honest. Does it promote 
a way of thinking where you're breeding racism in a college like this? I, I don't know. Right. And like, who are all the faculty African American, or are they? Are there any on there that are not? I'd be curious to that too. Like, if any instructors come in, like if I, like like Grambling, are they hiring like Sergeant Major Mulcahy from Glory? Oh, for God's sake, man! Do you not know your right from your left? No, 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 sir. How many here do not know right from left? Jesus. This is your front. This is your rear. This is your right. And this. Now you're learning, boy O. Come on. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> imagine they send the sergeant in. Right. I can't see that's acceptable under the curriculum. No, me either. And, and, and it's not even so much the curriculum that I'm, that I uh, uh, am curious about it's also the staff like you brought up like there's so many companies and other colleges and and just business in general that have you know have to hire so many of you know whatever so many women so many people of ethnicity you know whatever right. um and equal rights type deal but you know colleges like this if they only hire black people why is that allowed because if i had a company where it just so happened that the most qualified people all happen to be white I could get sued. Yeah, it's not allowed. I could get sued because this one person happens to be more qualified than this guy, but I have to hire the less qualified guy to meet a, to meet a, uh, a certain standard to not get sued. Yeah, it's crazy. That's fucking crazy in my book. You know, that's not racist. That's just common sense. You know, why, you know, why, you know, why am I going to hire the guy who thinks four plus four is seven? Because he's a different race. You know, that's crazy. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. No, I agree. I just find it interesting. I find it with all the stuff that still goes on in today's day and age. And you look at like uh, the, the nonsense that went on. And still with Ferguson, there was another guy shot. I don't know if you saw that in Ferguson, Missouri. Another guy shot with a long rap record, a long police record, was just shot and killed, 42-year-old, maybe uh, two days ago. That didn't make the news. Cop shot him dead. I mean, but his police record was a, a billion miles long. Right. I'm guessing that no white college is going to go to Ferguson, Missouri. That would, that, yep. would be my, that would be not be my targeted area. But I'm just saying that there's always so much. The news just pushes us in a direction where it just separates us as a people. And I think things like this, it does too. Or make it fair. Make it, you know, if there's somebody that, has, that wants to go to a school that just celebrates their Irish culture, have an all-Irish school. Right. Like, why isn't Notre Dame all Irish? Because they want to win football games. No, I'm joking. I'm kidding. But, but you know what I mean. There, maybe there should be institutions for, for – like, is there an Asian school, school? I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I mean, these are stats that would be great to research, you know, and maybe, you know, and maybe over the course of the next week I'll do some research and I'll bring some numbers back in next week's show. But it, it, it's crazy. I, I just don't know – a lot of people think that racism is such an issue – and I, it's not that it's not. I think a lot of pe- you know a lot of people are still racist, and it's just the way that it is at this point in time. And I think that there will always be racism. I don't think that racism will ever cease to exist. It's just not possible. I think it's impossible for racism to stop. But so many different people have so many different agendas that I think that it almost breeds hate, um, and it creates racism. Or the first time that. Anything happens to a person of color, it's immediately racist. They don't look at the full spectrum. They don't look at the full story. Oh, it's a black person. It's racist. Oh, it's a, it's a Spanish person. It's racist. Um, oh, well, your all-black school is fucking racist. Exactly. <laughs> but, I don't, but I don't care because it doesn't bother me. I think you should be allowed to have an all-black college. I think you should be allowed to have an all-white college. Um, if you want to hate Jimmy Jones because he has fucking one arm, that's your prerogative. And no, I, I agree. I, but I, you know, but I don't care. But I also, you know, I, I hate when people, you know, do that. I hate when people, when, when people call racist and then they go to class at their all black college at six o'clock in the fucking morning. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and you know, even with other things, like we talked about it, like, I don't know if, I don't know if anybody saw in the news and I don't want to go too off because I know your wife is friends with them, but the ice cream shop. Oh, the, uh, the big gay ice cream truck, the big gay ice cream shop. 
uh, or whatever that it is. I've yes, never been there. I've heard of cream. it. I heard it was delicious. It's 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 amazing ice cream, and it's in the middle of the West Village in New York City. So people that are not from this area that is predominantly it, that's San Francisco East. Okay, everybody there is pretty much gay. I mean, that's 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 it's a big, huge homosexual community. Those guys. If you ever met the two guys from the big gay ice cream truck before you go into whatever you're going to say, and I, it won't offend me in the least, they're two of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. They're, they they remind me of like a gay MythBusters. Like if you see the MythBuster guys, yeah, I just think of those two guys like cornholing each other and selling ice cream. That's freaking what it is. I mean, you got the one guy who kind of looks like uh, the guy with the goatee, little heavy set. And he plays like the bassoon. They're, I mean, they're, but they're great dudes. They're they're two really super nice guys, and they came to one of my wife's fundraisers and were guest judge. And the rice cream is amazing. But go ahead. Right. Well, right. I mean, being gay doesn't make you a bad person. I, I think people can love whoever they want to love and marry whoever they want to marry. I'm very pro-gay. You know what I mean? I'm very pro-gay marriage and all that stuff. I don't hate gay people. But it's just the example of this where it was a huge story where an ice cream store in New York City put out a sign that said the big straight ice cream. Right. <laughs> and obviously it was a direct attack against the big gay ice cream. Don't because forget no- to cup the bulls. <laughs> because for no reason whatsoever, nobody would ever just put up a sign that says the big straight ice cream. But people were fucking crazy about it. It was uproar. People took pictures and tweeted it. It was all over the news, the Huffington Post, CNN, that this guy is a bigot because he put a sign up that said the big straight ice cream. Well, maybe this guy that put out the sign that said the big straight ice cream is Christian. Maybe he's super religious and he's allowed to be super religious. You know, that's his right. Right. So maybe he doesn't believe that, you know, being gay is right. Um, That doesn't make him wrong. It doesn't make him wrong for putting a sign out that says the big straight ice cream because these people are allowed to, you know, because the other store is allowed to put out a sign that says the big gay ice cream. So if these people believe that gay is okay, they put up a sign. These people that believe gay is not okay, they're not allowed to put up a sign. They're immediately ridiculed and bashed. And I know people call it hate and, and, and you know, you got hate crimes and it's, it blows up into something ridiculous. Um, but I feel that that guy, you know, it, it's exactly what we're talking about. The black colleges, the white colleges, it's the same concept. If one store is allowed to, to do it, another store should be allowed to do it in the opposite spectrum. It's just my opinion. You know, people can call me whatever they want to call me. Uh, you know, I mean, I have a very close family member of mine that is gay, and I've been supporting her for years because I don't care. You know what I mean? Right. I, th- I think you're allowed to. You know, you should be allowed to do whatever you want to do. It's not a choice. You know, people are born gay. Whether people want to admit it or not, they're born fucking gay. You know what I mean? Sure. And, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's also nothing wrong with being against it. Like if you want to have straight flavored ice cream, or whatever the heck that guy was signed was put up there. That's fine. If you want to put, listen, this is the big ice cream truck, and our our ice cream is so good. I want to dip my balls in it. That's, that's, that's up to you too. I mean, we shouldn't be so judgmental that somebody that just because they put straight ice cream that it's it's anti-gay. And they shredded that guy. I don't know if you saw all the hate mail that that guy got. Shredded him all. Oh my it- god! They just destroyed him. It was terrible. And you want to know what? That's the exact thing that they did to that guy, that the gay community and everybody else did to that guy, are the exact same things that that exact community bitches about all the time of what it's done to them. Absolutely. They always talk about being socially accepted, but they don't socially accept anybody else's ideals but their own. And, you know, oh, well, I'm gay, so you should I'm accept gay. me for who I am, I'm period. I'm proud of it. Well, me personally, sure, I do. I accept you for whoever you are. But this person may not, and he's allowed to not accept you. (laughs) So stop ridiculing him. Stop bashing him. Stop killing his fucking business and stop doing your little tweets and getting it on, you know, Huffington Post. You're doing to him what you've been bitching about for years of what people are doing to you. Let bygones be bygones, dude. Seriously. Unless he came out and said, my ice cream believes in the Old Testament. You're all going to burn in hell. That's craziness, leave, right? Leave him alone, right? Right, you know, or has like you know, you know, part of my French world, but you know, if you know, if he had a sign that said like "Death to Fags" or you know things like that, like that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Then you can then you can Montav cocktail his place, right? But a sign that says "Big Straight Ice Cream" with the word "straight" capitalized in quotation marks 
Whatever. He was joking around with the guys that owned the big gay ice cream truck. Yeah. Calm down, dude. Calm down. Stop being so sensitive. Worry about your electric bill instead of worrying about what fucking Jimmy Joe's doing with a big straight ice cream sign. You know what I mean? Like worry about your own life. Uh, if people worried more about their own business than themselves, the world would most likely be a better place. It'd be a happier place. Oh, it's, oh my God. I, I, I don't know. I felt bad for that guy, though. But he took it down. It seemed like everything was cool. Well, yeah, he took it down because people were going to kill him. <laughs> because he got more hate mail than fucking, I don't know. He, it, it, it was insanity. I mean, it was national news. This sign was national news. He got as much hate mail as my pal Chucky Box did when he put up the, the parody about Fallon Fox. <laughs> That's, that's like that's very vague and obscure. Nobody knows what we're talking about, but you know what I'm talking about. Right, right. Yeah, I know. And she's also in the news again, but that's a different show. You know what I mean? But uh, One slap, you're going to love my nuts. <laughs> but yeah, it's just crazy. You know, I just wish people would mind their own business a little more. Um, not be so concerned with what their neighbors are doing. You know, whether they approve or whether they disapprove, whatever. Um, it's absolutely none of your business what somebody else is doing. You know, uh, a sign like that has no direct impact on your life. None. Your day was absolutely no different because of it. If you're bothered by it, you let it bother you. You know what I mean? Uh, I will tell you that now, you know, I do. I live in Hoboken, uh, New Jersey. And right up on my street, there's a, like a hair place, you know, like a fancy schmancy hair, hair salon. Now, I, I have to get my hair cut today. I, I go to the barber. You know, I go to the guy. going to put a little... It's got a straight edge razor, you you know, probably speak with a thick Italian accent, shave the dome. I don't go to the Fufu place. But the Fufu place has a sign outside that says eh, something about color, like get color, hot, buy color, try color, you know, gay color, just get some color. And I had a friend out of town, stopped in, we're walking, and he stopped and he's like, what is this? Why would somebody go here where it says gay color? And all of a sudden it got weird because he was getting loud on the street and he's like, Man, these fags actually allowed to put signs up like this and that. It's just like, oh, my God, you're going to get me killed. Right. What are you doing, dude? Right. But there are many people that think that way. Right. But that's another thing. You know, and like when I was talking about the gay community getting pissed off about it, it, you know, it's just as well equal on the opposite side. Like, you know, your friend or whatever getting all upset about it and being loud and obnoxious and talking about it. Well, he's very religion and he's just like, uh, you know, Jesus said killed gays. Right. I mean, you know, that's not what he, that's not what, what I meant, but you know what I mean. No, no, no. I know exactly what you mean. That's how he and, was. He was just like, no, no, Bible says no. And like he's allowed to be that way. He's allowed to believe that way. Now, is he allowed to I mean, you know, should he really be throwing a hissy fit on the street and being, you know, fag this and fag that? I mean, no, you know, just not. just walk away, man. Go home. Don't let it bother you. Pray about it. Or actually it's for, you know, as far as the Bible is concerned, you know, Jesus wants you to pray for those type, type you know, if, you know, if, you know, if you don't believe it, Jesus wants you to pray for him. I believe it was somewhere, you know, somewhere in the Bible, it says, you know, hate the sin, not, not, you know, not, not the sinner. That's exactly right. That's what I told him. You know, hate the sin, not the sinner. So pray for him. You know what I mean? That's all that you, you know, that's all that you can do. You, you know, you, you can be disgusted by it. Right. You, you know, you can go home and talk to your wife or your brother, you know, in private, like all oh, those fucking people. And this and that, you know, they're going to hell, whatever. Not here on the street. Not here in my neighborhood. Not here on the street yelling obscenities. Yeah, give me the... What is this faggot crap? That's pretty much what it was. Right. And that's unacceptable in my book. Yeah, me too. But a sign that says big straight ice cream is not unacceptable. No, absolutely not. (laughs) A white college is not unacceptable. No. And just like uh, Cain Velasquez having brown pride, why why not have Mexican pride? I've talked about this a thousand times offline. Because right. if, if, if Georgia St. Pierre, and we're talking about UFC fighters or studs, if Georgia St. Pierre comes out with white pride on his chest, he's a neo-Nazi. Oh, he's fired. But if he comes out with Canadian pride, it's okay. Right. But why right. is it okay for the, for the UFC heavyweight champion of the world to have brown pride on his chest? Right. To me, it's racist. It is. It's racist. Because not only is it like racist towards white people, but there are, are also brown, quote-unquote, black people. There are there are African Americans that are not black; they are brown or whatever you want to. You know what I mean? Like a brownish color. It can be racist towards them. It can be racist towards anybody that's not Mexican or whatever he wants to call himself. And I agree a hundred percent. There's a lot of double standard in the world, and I think 
a lot of the hate and racism is fueled by these double standards. I mean, I talked to I have one of my closest friends is Dominican, and he was like, "Well, I'm brown. Fuck the Mexicans. They're like a, they're like cockroach brown." So all of a sudden, within the brown in quotes community, you've got people getting all bent out of shape. It's like, well, right. why would that, that guy's Mexican? Why would he put brown pride on his chest? Right. He's like, you know, and you, you I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm a white guy. I'm Irish white, but I, you know what I mean. I'm not putting. I could put Irish pride on me if I was really into my Irish heritage. I'm never going to put white pride on me because people are going to be like, where's the swastika going to go with it? Right. For sure. My dad was German and my mom's Italian. I'm German and I'm German and Italian. And I think somewhere down the line, I think there might be some Swedish or, or maybe some Irish, in my, you know, like on my dad's side. But it's so far removed that I'm German. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm predominantly German and my mom's Italian. So, but, you know... It, it, to me, I'm, to me, I'm American. You know what I mean? I can't speak Italian. I can't speak German. I can count in German and maybe say a couple things because I lived in Germany for a couple years while I was in the military. But you know, I can't fluently speak German. I can't fluently speak Italian. Right. Um, I can cook like a son of a bitch. I can cook Italian food, but I'm American. But I don't claim heritage. But if I did, I wouldn't say white pride. I'd say Italian pride or say German pride. Agreed. But, I, but he gets no flag for it. Although, when you see all the times they, they put him on billboards when he's fighting, or you put it like he was on a bus the last time he fought uh, Junior Dos Santos, they cover up the brown pride. I didn't, I didn't see that. I made a note on it on one of the other shows that I do, or I did. And I said to that a while back, saying, you know, I find it hilarious that on all the buses in New York City, the brown pride is covered up. You don't huh. see it. Right. So obviously there's something wrong. Obviously they know that it upsets people. And in my opinion, is Cain Velasquez allowed to have a brown pride tattoo on, on his chest? Absolutely. Absolutely. But on the same token, Cain Velasquez is not allowed to get mad if somebody has white pride Agreed. on his chest. Agreed. Um, like if I want to go out today and put white pride across my chest, nobody should get mad. But the world would. Oh, it would be on... It'd be national news. It'd be Huffington Post. They'd be host. You know, if you know, if we were ever a huge show and and and, and listens, you know, listened to by thousands and thousands and millions of people, and they're gonna be like that. Clown's got a, a neo-Nazi tattoo on him. Right. The host of the other Mike and Mike show, a racist. <laughs> but I'm like, are you out of your mind? And it'd be worldwide fucking news. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it makes no sense. Makes no sense. Whatsoever. And I also, you know, and like I said, I think it fuels racism even more. You have a guy, you have a white guy that's already borderline racist that, you know, that uh, uh, stereotypes a lot of people, um, you know, that doesn't like black people, doesn't like, you know, Mexicans or Puerto Ricans or Cubans or whatever. He's one of those types of white people that are borderline, that are on the fence, that kind of makes some jokes, but whatever. A tattoo like Brown Pride can actually push a guy like that over the edge. Oh, Uh, my God. He's getting the Remington out. And I believe 100 percent that that can push somebody towards racism because it's like, oh, OK, well, we're not allowed to do this as a white race. But these motherfuckers are allowed to do this. And yeah, oh, he goes from borderline wackadoo to American History X. Right. Right. He turns from a white guy, a Chinese guy and a black guy all walked into a bar to bloodbath. Yeah, bloodbath. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's little things like that. It's little things like a tattoo. It's little things like a guy getting yelled at, putting for big straight ice cream. It's, it's all black colleges. It's things like that that can literally push people over the edge. Now, should it bother them? No, because it doesn't bother me. But there are people that it bothers. You know what bothers me? $13 beers at a Motley Crue concert. That fucking bothers me too. I haven't been to an, an, you know, an event like that in a very long time. Um, even when I used to go to fights a lot, like the seats that I were in, the drinks were always free, uh, so I didn't have to worry about it. But uh, I mean, the last time that I was at an event, well, I can't even about it. I I can't even remember. But thirteen dollars is ludicrous. And the t-shirts were forty, fifty, and seventy-five bucks. Oh my god they they were printed in China a week prior for five cents a piece. You know, my wife of course has to get the Motley Crue t-shirt. It's another forty. I had to fucking throw down that you wanted. Oh, God. Ah, oh, got to get it. Like, every time we go to a show, oh, wait, I got to go to the merch store. Now, there's another C-note thrown out there. Right. I'm just, right. I could have went to the fucking Cayman Islands 
and instead I went and saw Motley Crue and Alice Cooper. <laughs> Dude, go to Google and buy your T-shirts prior to the concert and just wear the shirt. Like, why Like why you got to buy the, the shirt at the concert? I guess it's part of the experience. I understand. You know, she's been doing that since a kid. She wants a shirt. What am I going to do? We go see Kiss four times when they're on tour. That's, that's, another, that's another two bills and T-shirts. Right. I agree. You can't say no. You can't say no. That's true. I mean, you know. If- it's costing me. A, I went to see when I saw Kiss in Atlantic City down at the Boardwalk Hall. I mean, I'm getting $11 Bud Lights, for Christ's sake. Just my ass getting destroyed. Ugh. And I needed to drink to get through some of that stuff. Some of the people in the crowd, because Def Leppard opened up, and it's just like, dude, there ain't enough booze to put up with these fools. And trust me, they were good. They were good. Just the crowd. It's like, come on, man. You're, you're 49 years old. Put your titties away. <laughs> Nobody needs to fucking see that. All you girls here that are hammered and doing a little bit of ketamine, put your fucking titties away. There's, uh, well, I mean, they're still living in the 80s. It is what it is. Dude, I was sitting there, Mike, with my, with my, it's an open, you know how it goes. You buy a draft beer, right? Right. Big plastic cup, right? Right. Do you always have it drinking? No. You have it like, well, you put it right, you hold it in your right hand if you're right handed. I had it on the arm rest of the seat, and these 48 to 52 year old group of, of uh, soccer moms, where popped a little ketamine, hammered, probably hit, did a couple, snapped a couple rips, and now they're dancing, uh, rock on, rock on, and they pull the titties out, and that titty nipple splashed right into my fucking eleven dollar beer, <laughs> fucking bouncing around. Half the beer's gone. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? Put your goddamn loose cannons back in the goddamn shirt, please. Go away. <laughs> I gotta go get another fucking beer. I got fucking just like. Areola hair and shit all over my goddamn foamy top, and I was just like, "Where's Kiss? Please, let Def Leppard get off the stage. Bring Kiss out for Christ's sake." That is terrible, terrible. That's that's a terrible story. <laughs> but it, that, that shit's true, man. These girls are fucking weird, fucking wackos. <laughs> it's not like you're going to see uh, Kiss in 1974 with those titties perky. <laughs> These babies were bouncing. And for some reason, even back in '74, for some reason, I think the evolution of boobs. Has well evolved. Yeah, they've they've gotten tighter and plastic <laughs> surgery's gotten better. A little higher, a little, a little higher, a little thicker, or a little thicker, a little harder. Because you know, I mean, I mean, you watch some movies or whatever, like or some films back in the seventies. I mean, there's some orangutan titties back in the seventies, boy. Yeah, that's and, where what you, that's where Chewbacca came from because that's the first time Lucas got some and uh, thing yelled at him. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh my god, look at his vag. Yep. Every girl back there had like the azalea bush between the legs. <laughs> Throw a little powder sugar on them, and you can make those shits in the ski slopes. I mean, there's some bad fucking titties from the seventies. You throw water on them, they fucking multiply. Seventies <laughs> porn was terrible. Holy Christ! Anyway, there's, before we before we wrap up this week's show, there's something uh, I want to talk about and touch upon real quick. Another sports story. We like talking sports here. I know uh, Mike's not a huge NBA fan. I'm I'm a struggling Nets fan. I've been a Nets fan for years. I had season tickets for a while. Now I go to a few games a year, and they're, they're always going to be terrible. But Rex Chapman, I don't know if you remember him at all. He was a, he was an NBA star for a while. He's in his mid forties now. Old is now forty six. Uh, he was the first round draft pick of Charlotte, nineteen eighty eight. Played for Kentucky, University of Kentucky. He was a superstar in college. Right, and he played for the Suns, right? He played for Washington, uh, Miami, and Phoenix. Yes, Phoenix Suns in a twelve year NBA career. Okay. Well, it seems that he... There's a sound clip. I've been caught stealing once when I was five. It looks like he was caught stealing. But he's been arrested for shoplifting $14,000 worth of merchandise from an Apple store in Scottsdale, Arizona, and selling them at a pawn shop. That's a <laughs> mess. That's a me- I just brought it up. That is a mess. The what second is- that I Googled his name, that, that was the first thing that popped up. Fourteen thousand dollars in Apple merchandise. I mean, he's being held on suspicion of nine counts of organized retail theft and five counts of trafficking stolen property. What is he doing? What happened? That is a man that didn't save his money at all. I mean, he's Allen Iverson broke. Where Alan, you know, so you saw he was like panhandling in front of like a Walgreens or something. I don't know if you saw that. That guy made like a hundred something million dollars, and now he don't have he don't have a home. Right. Well, here's a stat, and this is a, and this is a fact. Um, after a player stops playing for two years, 
Okay, we're we're going to start with the NBA, and then I'll tell you the stat for the NFL. Um, after a player within for the NBA, sixty percent of NBA players go broke within five years of retirement, and in the NFL, that's an amazing stat. S- no, this one's even more amazing. In the NFL, seventy eight percent of former NFL players go bankrupt within two years. Holy moly. After they stop playing. Those, I mean, even 60% is immense. Know what I mean? It, 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 it's huge. Even 70%, 5 or 10% would be a lot. Right. I mean, these guys make hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, I understand your lower, your lower level guys, you know, maybe your kickers, uh, maybe your third string quarterbacks. Uh, you know, guys that are on practice squads, I can understand maybe going broke a couple years after you're done playing. Get a job and stop spending like you make it rain. Right. Well, not only, but these guys have college degrees. A lot of them. I mean, a lot of them deferred and went into the draft early, but a lot of them graduated college. They got to have degrees in something like go like go get a job, dude, or get a good financial advisor that, you know, or don't buy gold rim sunglasses. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't, don't buy platinum teeth. Right. Don't go to the Kentucky Derby, Wes Welker, win while you're high on ecstasy and pass out all your winnings to the crowd. Don't do that. Put it in the bank. (laughs) Save it. Invest. Start a business. It makes no sense. It doesn't. It makes no sense. Like I wish like I don't make any. I mean, I wish I made millions. I mean, my wife and I make a decent living, but not crazy. No, I mean, I couldn't go buy a mansion in the Hamptons or anything. But these guys are making millions, and I save better than I save better than they do. Yeah, it makes no sense. It's crazy, and I make a fiftieth less than what they do, a hundredth. And uh, yeah, it makes no sense. I don't know. I don't know how all those guys go broke. I mean, they have mansions. They just you got to spend wisely, right? But don't spend. Like, if you're single, if you're a single athlete, why do you need a hundred and fifty million dollar home? Why do you need a fifty million dollar home, seventy five million dollar home, whatever? You know, why do you need a five million dollar fucking home if you're single? Have a nice little house built worth a million or two. That's it, and you own it. You know, that's it. You yeah, don't need all these gadgets and toys, and it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? And then you got a guy like Rex Chapman who's now forced to go steal fourteen grand worth of merchandise, sell it to a pawn shop because he didn't save properly. No, it makes no sense at all. It's just, it's unbelievable how the mighty have fallen with a lot of these guys. Yep. Oh, and sign a prenup. Athletes, sign a, a prenup. If you're going to get married, if you're going to be a superstar, I don't care if they're offended or not. If they love you, they'll still marry you. Sign a fucking prenup. <laughs> it's true. Right. Otherwise, you know, you look at guys that Kenny Anderson, who was a basketball player, he married the girl who was on The Real World Season 2, I think, and she was marrying him just to get his loot. Right. For sure. It happens. I mean, and if people don't think it happens, they're crazy and they have blinders on. Uh, you know, you have some of the most unattractive men in sports. Like there's some unattractive men that play, per, you know, per professional sports, but they make tons of money. And their girlfriends or their fiancés and their wives are ridiculously gorgeous. You can't tell me she's there because she's attracted to them. No, absolutely not. Not at all. So the moral of the story, save, get a good financial investor. Uh, don't buy gold rim sunglasses. <laughs> and don't steal. And don't steal. And sign a prenup. And sign a prenup. And sign a prenup. Last thing I want to touch on before uh, we wrap up this week. Uh, first of all, thank you for the folks that listen and all the emails that we get so far. You know, Obviously, it's only week number three. We're going to have some people uh, come on sooner than later. But uh, for all the feedback so far, thank you very much. The only thing we ask you to do is tell somebody. Tell somebody to like the page, facebook.com backslash the other mics. Go to the other mics.com. Follow us on Twitter at the, what is it? I always get it wrong. The other it's mo- uh, T O M A M show. There you go. Uh, that's why I just always tell people just go to the other mics.com. All the links are out there to our Twitter, to our Facebook, to our iTunes, to our Stitcher. Um, if you subscribe to us on iTunes, please leave a review. Uh, not only rate us with the stars, but you know, try to leave a little comment as well, whether good or bad. You know, give us feedback. L- you know, let us know what you want to hear us talk about. Let us know what you don't want to hear us talk about. Um, you know, reviews is what makes any show better. Exactly good or bad. Right. Uh, go to the 
Go to the iTunes and give us a, a good review for the folks that have done it. Thank you. And Stitcher. Stitcher you can do as well. Hit a thumbs up. Tell, tell people why you like us. The only way that we can keep going is that other people tell other people, and the more word gets out and the grassroots starts to spread. Absolutely. Speaking of grassroots, so the last thing here that I'm going to talk about, and I think uh, I, I was talking to you about this briefly, Mike, was this 14-year-old and the sex trafficking survivor. I'm just going to play a clip. Involved in, in human sex trafficking? Yes. Um, when I was 14, I met a pimp, um, one that we would consider a gorilla pimp, um, very violent, uh, and didn't take the time to romance me. Um, and I had been leading up to... Uh, Wait, i got to stop for a second. A gorilla pimp who didn't take time to romance me? <laughs> what, the, what is happening here? So what she said is that if he was a little smoother and a little nicer to her, she would have obliged to be yeah. in the sex trafficking industry. You know, if he, you know, I was 14, so maybe like two Bartles and James and like a like maybe a great blunt. <laughs> I might have been into it or maybe some candles. You want me to suck dick for a living? You got to woo me. Yeah. <laughs> At least get me a Big Mac or something. Something, something. Please. You better supersize that something shit. something similar for years, I had been promiscuous and um, into drugs, and so it was very easy for the pimp. Well, where were you when I was in eighth grade? <laughs> That's all I want to know. You. Oh, by the way, you could, you could write, the, what is this, the person at L-I-Z underscore M-A-R-I-E 89. I don't know why they have the Twitter feed up. Um, kind of get his hold on me and after six weeks of trafficking me out of a hotel room uh two blocks away from home um i was able to run away unfortunately i met another pimp a few weeks later um who romanced me in the way that we would uh a romeo pimp would um, a romeo pimp (laughs) so she escaped one trafficking ring (laughs) <laughs> All things into another one because she got wooed again. What is happening here? I didn't realize 14-year-old girls nowadays are that easy. Well, look. Look, you're going to get some people that say, oh, well, she's young. She's impressionable. She's fucking 14. She's 14. And she, look, there's one common denominator to all of these problems. Her. <laughs> she's letting people woo her into fucking being a hooker. I mean, what, I don't, what am I listening to? <laughs> Continue. Keep going. That's what I love about these high school girls, man. I get older, they stay the same age. Um, and that led me to being trafficked in D.C., um, actually on the track in D.C. for a few months before I was rescued by the FBI and the Metropolitan Police Department. When you are have to talk about this again, and I guess I can throw this to you and Danielle. Ever since this has happened to you, you seem to have to relive this story in order to bring awareness around the issue. Do you find yourself emotionally right back there? Uh, for myself, no. I I spent 10 years detaching from the, the past, um, and so I spent 10 years really kind of uh, uh, pushing it away. And now that I'm, I'm advocating and I, and I do the work that I do and I have to bring my story to light pretty much daily, um, I find it more therapeutic in that what I'm doing is helping others, and therefore it makes it a lot easier for me to um, repeat my story again and again. I, I think guys were repeating her again and again. I don't, what was what did I just listen to? What is wrong with her? That's what I want to know. What in the hell is wrong with you? I think that she just wasn't getting what she wanted anymore. So therefore, now she's an advocate. I mean, it, 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 it's <laughs> so I escaped one pimp only to allow another one to talk me into it. it was horn me out of a room in D.C. I I, I don't get it. I mean, maybe the drugs played an influence because she was addicted. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, mean, it sounded like she was a drug addict is what she said. So maybe he offered her, you know, an endless supply of heroin or crack or cocaine, whatever her poison was. And she had no choice. That's a lot of dipping. But that's a lot of dipping, my friend. And let me tell you what, everybody has a choice. But (laughs) it's just the way she words. I escaped one only to be wooed by another. Stunned. Amazing. Amazing. I just don't know where the hell these girls were when I was 14. No. 
Me either. I'm sitting here pushing rolls of fucking quarters, Doug's Arcade, playing Cubert, trying to get in just a little flick of the raisin nipple. <laughs> I was playing Nintendo <laughs> and baseball. I was a big baseball player. I've been playing baseball since I was a kid. So that's what I was doing. I was playing baseball when I was 14. But I certainly wasn't, I certainly wasn't hanging out with 14-year-old no. <laughs> sex slaves. Uh, where was the 14-year-old sex slaves in, in Point Pleasant Borough High School in New right. Jersey? Right. I mean, I mean, there might have been some sex slaves in my school, but they were free because you know, they were just whores. But – you know, that tends to happen in a population of 4,000 and in a graduating class of 90 people. Yeah. We, we, I mean, every, every school has that girl that you learn from. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, they all have that girl that the boys learn from. Yeah. That's, that just goes to the territory. There's a, and over any population or any gr- large number of people, people fill slots. You have that guy, that girl, and we all had that girl. Right. For sure. And if anybody says they didn't, they're lying. And if any wife out there is listening and, and getting mad or whatever, you were it. I, we're talking 20 years ago. No, well, if you're getting so, mad about this, then you were that girl we're talking about. Then you were that girl. Absolutely. We're talking 20 years ago. So shut the fuck up. I mean, we had a girl in our school we called Guppy. We didn't call her Guppy because she collected fish. <laughs> That's terrible. We called her Guppy because we could always find her underneath the fucking stairwell in the in, in the middle the middle stairwell of the main hallway branch and for a bag of Swedish fish you got the gummy right for sure i mean when i when i was 15 16 17 year, years old you know i was born and raised in the middle of the woods you know what i mean a really small town so we always found that 21 year old to buy us a keg to go out into the middle of the woods build a fire and throw a huge woods party right there was always the one girl that you could count on. You had to get there early enough to get her or else somebody else was going to get her. <laughs> but there was always that one or two girls at every single Woods party that you could guarantee. Yeah, topless by 6, a, 6 p.m. Absolutely. You'd find her in the back of a car with her little butt, butt bouncing up and down at some point in time throughout that night with somebody. So if you wanted to be that guy, you had to get there early enough. And If, you, was, want, if you wanted to be the one guy that knew what, a, knew what a salad toss was before the rest of your friends, you had to get there early. Or, yep, for sure. Wow. Okay. Uh, right. uh, to to uh to uh, be young again. Oh my God! Where's the time machine? I need the hot tub time machine. I need to go back and see if I can find the sex slaves. You know, I bet you they would they would be working at Burger King back in the day. Right. In right. The small town that I grew up in. Right. Anyway, I don't... it was worth the. It was listen, for what I got the raisin nipple, for twenty dollars a quarter at Cubert or Zaxxon or at the one time whoever had enough money to play. Uh, what the fuck was that? Dragon's Lair. Remember that? I do remember that. But like at the time when I was young and that came out, it was like like fifty cents or a buck to play. And if you were, if you had enough like loot that you could get a girl to play that once or twice, dude, you were big pimping. Right. You get that and a cheeseburger. You you might even get an HJ. <laughs> that's a handy. That's handy. And that's all you cared about when you were like fifteen. Handies were fine. Right. And but freaking but boy were they terrible though. They were terrible because you they were, know not, they were ripped that shit. Uh, just terrible. The fifteen-year-old handy compared to the forty-year-old handy is that it takes a lot less, a lot less maneuverability at forty to get the seed spillage than it did at fifteen. Fifteen, you needed like a professional tug of war team, and <laughs> you know it was almost like naked and afraid, where you had to try to make a fucking fire out of nothing. You know what I mean? And if it was raining. Or if there was, you couldn't get the fire started if you didn't have enough. If you had too much wind. It's like the seed's not coming, baby. <laughs> right. Well, that and the fifteen-year-olds back then used to treat your cock like a fucking Stretch Armstrong because yeah. they didn't know what they were doing. You know what I mean? Like it, plastic it, man. It hurt worse than it felt good, but you dealt with it, so you could brag to your friends later. You know, when you come, you become an adult. When the girls stop treating your your junk like silly putty, and all of a sudden it's like Demi Moore and Ghost. Right, and they're just they just got a little bit of nice moisture on their hands, and the next thing you know, they're playing with your junk, and then you could just put a cigar out in it. This is fucking beautiful ceramic, just fucking ashtray. It's wonderful, epic. That is awesome. Anyway, thanks everybody for listening this week. We'll be back next week. Show number four. We're, we're, we're gonna have uh, I got a pal that wants to come on and talk football with us, so I'll talk to you about that after. And um, we still have to get the guys on to talk beer. We're going to start getting some guests, like we said. Listen, it's a, it's a long haul. We just like the fact that you're listening. Tell somebody. Spread the word. Go to the websites. And until next week, I'm Mike Whittles. I am Mike Thorbert. And don't be worried about being guilty of being white. Yes. You can and go to those, any college that you want to go to. And keep on dipping.
I, I shouldn't be. I'm a very, uh, you know, lucky guy. I got a lot going for me. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm relatively young. I'm white, which thank God for that shit, boy. <laughs> that is a huge leg up. Are you kidding me? Oh, God, I love being white. I really do. Seriously, if you're not white, you're missing out because this shit is thoroughly good. It, and but let me be clear, by the way, I'm not saying that white people are better. I'm saying that being white is clearly better. Who could even argue? <laughs> if it was an option, I would re-up every year. Oh, yeah, I'll take white again. Absolutely. I've been enjoying that. I'm going to stick with white. Thank you. Here's how great it is to be white. I could get in a time machine and go to any time, and it would be fucking awesome when I get there. exclusively a white privilege. Black people can't fuck with time machines. A black guy at a time machine is like, hey, think of before 1980. No, thank you. I don't want to go. But I can go to any time. The year two? I don't even know what was happening then. But I know when I get there, welcome. We have a table right here for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's lovely here in the year two. I can go to any time in the past. I don't want to go to the future and find out what happens to white people because we're going to pay hard for this shit. You got to know that. We're not going to just fall from number one to two. They're going to hold us down and fuck us in the ass forever. And we totally deserve it. But for now, we.